Okay, back to our podcast. Um, last week we talked about natural healing. No, we the first week we talked about natural healing. Last week we talked about plant based diets, but this week we want to talk about some of the challenges of eating plant based in a meat based world. <laughs> so, but it's not as daunting as you think. You just have to learn. We're going to teach you some uh, tips and tricks today to make the transition as easy as possible. Yes. So what do you think, Jennifer? Yeah. Um, so I know for me, it took me, like I said, about 20 years to actually get full on whole food plant-based. And so I, like I started with the uh, meatless Mondays. That was before we even knew about meatless Mondays, but I did. So one day a week, there'd be no meat, but we were still eating a lot of cheese. Um, yeah. And then we gradually got to where we weren't eating any meat during the week. Um, we would just save it for when we went out to eat on the weekends, okay. um, but still eating cheese. And then um, we started watching documentaries too. Like you said, Pork Server Knives. Um, I think I read How Not to Die after we had watched things like Food Inc. and and stuff like that. And my yeah. youngest child said, I'm going vegan. I'm not eating any animal products anymore. And it's something that I had been wanting to do, um, you know, all along, you know, like I told you, I had learned all you need. Oh, I don't, did I even say this last time? All you need in a day to meet your amino acids, your protein needs is a small can of tuna. That's it wow. um, to get all the protein you need. And I had learned that back in the nineties. And so I knew, you know, we should not be eating that much meat if all we need is that small can of tuna. But when she said that she was running cross country and, you know, I was working out in the gym and I thought I need still need to make sure we're getting our protein. And I think that that's everyone's biggest concern. You know, how do you get your protein? So I started looking up um, bodybuilders and things like that to see how are they getting their protein needs met, you know, but as a, an aside, bodybuilders aren't healthy. Oh, um, no. They may be able to build large muscles, but they're not necessarily healthy. Um, mm -hmm. But I did see that it was it's easy to get your uh, protein needs met without even animal, even eating that small can of tuna that you can have, you know, other foods. Um, so I lost my train of thought there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so when we were transitioning, so she said that she wasn't eating it anymore. And I remember telling my husband and he said, don't take away my cheese. And he was very serious. I mean, he was like, he was afraid of giving up the cheese. And now I know, you know, after studying, um, taking some classes um, that cheese can activate different receptors in the brain, like morphine. And yep. so we actually are literally addicted to cheese. And so cheese is one of the hardest things to give up. And when I started looking at our diet, not only were we eating cheese every day, it was a big part of every day. It was like, you know, if we had grits, we had um, cheese on the grits. Um, if we had a sandwich at lunch, there was always cheese. You, know, you eat tacos or pizza, Parmesan cheese, or you know, cheese on your tacos. And so it was like, wait a minute, how are we going to eat without putting cheese on our foods? And so that was the hardest thing for me. And I was looking for substitutes. And I know this isn't helping people, but I'm thinking, hoping that this helps people because they're doing the same thing. So I started yeah. looking for substitutes for cheese, and you're not going to find that same thing that's going to react those part the make the reactions in your brain you know the soothing that the comfort that you get from cheese and substitutes and so i think the best thing to do is to find meals that don't have any cheese for a few days break <laughs> the cheese habit first and then start making these um cheese substitutes because now like i'll make i make ranch dressing i make uh cheese sauces and things like that and they taste delicious to yeah. me now but at the time, you know, if you buy the shredded cheese in the grocery store that's vegan, it's it's not going to be the same. You're it's just not, not. the, the texture is not going to be the same. The taste is not going to be the same. And so it's looking at what you already eat. So most people do eat like uh, pasta with marinara sauce. Yeah. Is that the healthiest? Well, it depends on the type of pasta. And there are, you know, good, better and best ways. If you are just transitioning and you're transitioning from a standard American diet, eating um, pasta with marinara sauce, you're already eating a plant-based meal. Exactly. Can you improve on that pasta? Yes. But for now, let's just do one thing at a time. So um, let's just start thinking, you know, do you like black bean burgers? I love black bean burgers. Okay. So let's have a dinner with black bean burgers. We could have some oven-baked um, potatoes, 
you know, for fries and, you know, roasted broccoli. So we just, there's another plant-based meal. Um, if we like, I don't know, some of them are hard. Um, I'm trying to think of things because now I eat them, but, I, you know, looking back, okay, I love Chinese food. Yeah. You know, um, you could get fried rice, um, vegetable fried rice, you know, or get fried rice with some um, stir-fried vegetables. Um, you could get... I can't remember what I used to get, but I mean, if you go to an Asian restaurant, it's so easy to get uh, teriyaki vegetables. It's delicious with fried rice. There you go. Another plant-based meal. Um, even like I like vegan sushi. Yeah. It's, um, it's and so if you like sushi, you can get vegan sushi. Um, so I'm, I'm taking over. So I'll let you <laughs> share some of your tips to get started. Oh, well, Jennifer, you're talking about some of the some of the best places like restaurants to get plant-based meals is of course you're saying asian mm -hmm. mexican places you can find some vegetarian options if you say if you tell them to hold the cheese and sour cream usually yes <laughs> uh, another good uh cuisine uh is indian food oh you can get oh yeah a lot of plant-based indian dishes and they are so delicious the way they use spices you know indian food um well, if you if say you want to go to the subway, if you're just transitioning, you can go to the subway. If you, I mean, I don't recommend it, but to transition, you can get a, ve a vegetable sub with uh, vinegar for the dressing. Yes. You know? Um, yeah. Another one that's not healthy is uh, Taco Bell. So yeah. I'm not saying Taco Bell is healthy, but that is my daughter's favorite. And she will even get black bean tacos. I mean, I don't know yeah. if everybody knows you can do that, but you yeah. can tell them instead of meat, I want black beans. And so she'll get black bean tacos or black bean burrito um, or just three fried beans in the taco. And so it can be messy, but you just tell them no cheese. And uh, it's actually delicious without the cheese. And one trick I use for Mexican food is avocado. Or guacamole yeah. Yeah. yeah and so you don't even miss the cheese you still get that creamy oh, texture yeah. um the smooth and creamy um fat like i'll even make quesadillas which doesn't make sense quesadilla means cheese but um i'll make quesadillas with black beans and avocado when you cook it you still have the creamy and the beans so it's delicious and uh yes you were talking about taco bell if you're transitioning taco bell is very um they have a lot of things you can veganize there. They have a whole menu. You can, you can, if you know, look it up on uh, Google vegan options at Taco Bell. You would be yeah. shocked how many things that you can make vegan there. Yes, which is another thing. So let's talk about some other tools. If you're going out to eat, like mm -hmm. I never go out to eat. I live in the middle of nowhere. And so I cook yeah. all of my foods and well, number one, then I know what's in the what's in there. But for people who are transitioning, if you're traveling or you work in the city, like my husband works in Atlanta a lot, um, and so he has to find places to eat. If you yeah. just Google Atlanta vegan restaurant, you'll get a bunch of them. But you can also use some different apps. So there's like Happy Cow. You could put in yeah, uh, Happy Cow Atlanta, and it will tell you all the different places that you can find um, options. And then if you just go to that restaurant, so let's say I'm going out to eat, like, um, I have a family member who loves Cracker Barrel. And so I'll go, oh gosh, what in the world can I eat at Cracker Barrel? But if you just Google for me, I have to have gluten-free, but I'll put it in gluten-free vegan Cracker Barrel. And yeah. they even have a whole, they have a gluten-free menu. They have a vegan menu and I can just cross reference there. And it's so easy to put something together. But if you're not even at that point yet, then just look at, you know, look at the menu. You do have to be careful um, because uh, like green beans are cooked in ham, yeah, you know, things like that. And so there's some things that you don't think about unless you grew up eating country food, which I did. Um, so I know there's fat back in most things. Burger <laughs> <laughs> yes. Bell is definitely that way, but. Yes. And people, you, don't, you, go ahead. people don't know things like uh, McDonald's French fries are cooked. They're like coated in. Uh, beef something beef, i can't beef remember fat, I think. beef fat yes and so people think <laughs> oh i can have french fries which is another thing i'm getting totally off topic again um you can eat no animal products and not be eating healthy oh yes so like i could go i could go to like mcdonald's i don't even think they have salads anymore at mcdonald's anyway i could get french fries and a coke 
and say that I'm eating uh, vegan and that's not healthy, you know, and so. Well, that's yeah, why so I like to use whole food plant-based because some versions of vegan diets are horrible. So I know, I know vegans that, that live on Oreo cookies yes. and vegan donuts and vegan pizza, and just yes. vegan junk food. That's worse right. for you than eating uh, a diet with a little bit of meat and salad. You know what I mean? Right. Right. Yeah. So, if you're eating a grass fed organic yeah. grass finished beef on with, you know, some steamed vegetables, that's definitely going to be healthier than eating some of these other, other foods. And, you know, I didn't think about this, you know, we're on a, we're on a podcast, we're, we're using names. And so hopefully it's okay that we're using these restaurant names oh. <laughs> in our podcast. <laughs> Um, but I want to point out too, you know, we're not calling these healthy. So we're talking about natural healing and plants for natural healing. This is just for if you're transitioning and you, you're trying to figure out how to eat healthier and you're going from standard American diet to this. Now, if you yeah. are very sick, you have a chronic illness, um, you have an autoimmune disease, you have cancer, you already have heart disease, then this isn't right for you. And so you actually yeah. need to go even deeper and it's going to be hard. But if you really want to fight this, then that is it's worth it. You know, if you don't want to keep living like you, you know, you're in pain or you have no energy or you can't get out of bed or you have another chemo treatment or radiation or something that you're getting ready to face or you're going to have your gallbladder removed or something. Now is when you need to really take the leap. And it's not that hard. It sounds hard because it's a complete life change here. But there are so many tools to help you. You know, you just go to Pinterest and, and put in, you know, foods that you like. So when you are sick, you may be looking for comfort foods, but you can find ways to make it where it's not going to be too difficult. And sometimes you'll pull up a recipe and it may even look like it has a hundred ingredients, but if you look at it, you know, it might have thyme, ginger, garlic, oregano. So it looks long, but those are just herbs and spices that you have in your um, cabinet. So before you toss out a recipe, because it looks too hard, really look at those ingredients. You know what? I have all those already on hand. It might not be as difficult as I think. Or Google um, one pot plant-based or one pot vegan, blah, 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 whatever it is that you want. It's, it's, it's much easier than, than you think. Yeah, she's correct. Transitional. Transitional is if you're just some person that you're not sick but you want to, you know, maybe lose a little weight, get a little healthier, then you have time to transition. But like Jeff was saying, if you're already very ill, you need to jump in with both feet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. And there are plenty of tools out there um, to help. Yeah. That as well. And both yeah. of us work with, we, we haven't even talked about what we do. Both of us work with people one-on-one. Um, I know I even have a program that helps people. I have a, a seasonal reset every mm -hmm. season. So I, you know, I don't know when you're listening to this podcast, but you can always, you know, check the links in our bio. Um, we have things in place. So for my five day reset, um, you don't have to go completely whole food plant-based. Um, it's for, um, omnivores. And so it helps, you know, if you're just transitioning from standard American diet and want to eat cleaner, um, it's more like an elimination diet. There's no sugar and, um, there's no, um, processed foods and we eliminate, um, alcohol and caffeine, which caffeine we haven't talked about either, can go either way. Um, but there's different things like that. So if you are looking for something like that to help you with your transition, then I know that's available. But Daniel and I both work with people one on one as well. So I don't know if you want to say more about what you do. Yeah, we uh, I think we both teach plant based healing, and um, I have a uh, I always like to combine herbs with plant-based diets if you depending on what problem you're coming to me with we can tailor a program for you with uh, herbal cleansing and specific herbs for whatever you're going through but also I think that the biggest part about what we do from what I have found is that people need somebody to keep them on track because yeah, this, them accountable. when you transition to this way of eating you'll be surprised about how your life changes in a lot of different ways you'll never think about mm -hmm. you may have friends now and I, you may have friends that start to not hang out with you as much right 
but if right. you're sick but if you if you're really ill and you have a friend that does that maybe they weren't really your friend in the first place you have to think about that right yeah and you tell people i have to eat this way yeah yeah it's important for me for my health if they're friends then they they they'll, they'll understand you. yeah mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and hopefully they support you. Um, one thing we haven't talked about, I don't know how we're doing on time, but is um, when it comes to food, it, it's, we use food to celebrate, um, to for get togethers, you know, birthday party at work, or, you know, go out to eat, and we, we give ourselves these treats, which aren't, I mean, they might taste good on your taste buds, but they're not good for your body. And, you know, when you think about that, if you know someone who is an alcoholic, and we're going out, do you tell them, oh, just have this one glass of wine or this one beer? You don't do it. But if it's somebody is, you know, they need to, like for me, I have to have gluten-free and someone says, oh, you can just have this cake this one time. Well, no, I can't. Yeah. I can't. And so for some reason, people still pressure you, you know, to eat this. And so it can even be, you know, if it's just for your health, you know, I'm not going to eat this um, steak because I'm trying to prevent this or recover for something or heal it. Oh, but, you know, this is a special occasion. You should have this. And it's like, well, you know, you know, and so for some reason in our society, it's okay to pressure people to eat something that's not in their best interest, you know, and I, you know, I I don't understand that. I don't either. Um, I think one way around it, this may work for some people say, well, my doctor said I have to eat this way. Well, that's true. And that's a lot true. of times they'll shut people up. Right. I've noticed. Right. So. Yeah. Oh, and you can always throw, you know, say you're allergic to it or something. Yeah. Mm-hmm. People are afraid of allergies. Yes. You're not telling, you might not be telling the truth, but sometimes I don't know why it's so hard um, if you're that. trying to, to eat specific food you don't want to eat healthier or whatever <laughs> and you know something else that we haven't talked about today is sometimes you do lose some friends and sometimes you know you get less invites you know people don't want to invite you over or go out to eat with you because um there's not going to be something for you to eat you know they don't have your food <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah yeah can you eat here or what can you eat you know if we go here what can you eat and it's you don't want the whole night to be centered around what you can eat yeah yeah and you know i can go i can find something anywhere you know maybe it is just a bowl of iceberg lettuce but if i know i'm going somewhere where I, there's going to be food i can't eat then i'm going to eat before i go and then just eat something small when we're out but it gets easier the longer you do this people yes. start to know you the way you eat and they and sometimes they will accommodate you or you bring your own food but yes. just if you're really ill and you really, your soul tells you you really need to do this, there's going to be some trials, but they will work themselves out. Yes. And you'll probably make new friends. So you will make new friends. Yes. Like know? us. Yeah. Yes. Like I met Jennifer at the School of Natural Healing. Yes. And, and we were pastor, looking for gluten free yeah. bread. <laughs> yes. Yes. And me, it sounds like me and Jennifer, our past were similar as far as. We were into the gym culture, eating a lot of meat. And then we learned, well, this isn't the right way to go. And now we're, we're reformed <laughs> meat eaters. Yes. And look, we're launching this podcast to help others. Um, right. Yes. Which we didn't talk about that. Like I was a major meat eater. I mean, I was a major meat eater before our meat. I was all about the meat. Yep. Um, you know, hamburgers and hot dogs for dinner. Yes. Uh-huh. Both. I wanted a hamburger and a hot dog. You know, we, I was selling, I was selling you, you know, when my husband and I were dating, it was like, he would order pasta and I'd order ribs, you know, it's like, <laughs> it's usually the opposite. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah. I was like, nah, I need the ribs or barbecue chicken, you know, whatever. I was a big meter burnt hot dogs. You know, I wanted, I wanted the hamburger and the hot dog and I wanted the hot dog burnt. And so oh, now boy. I'm like, oh my gosh. <laughs> so I've got, yes. So I need, I have 40 years Our of cleansing. Citizen. Yes. <laughs> to do yes yes and so for me it's very important to eat this way because i know i ate a lot of the wrong foods before a lot of processed foods the linguines i talked about before um yes and so i have a lot of cleansing to do and i want to live a long time and be active and healthy for many many more years my grandma's over a hundred wow still walks. I, I took her out to lunch saturday i mean i took my grandma out to lunch wow She's over a hundred years old i want to be like that yeah so i want to eat and clean everything out, you know, so when she was young, 
she was she was exposed to her own little toxins coal in the air and stuff like that yeah. but she didn't eat she didn't grow up on coke and oh no stuff like that you know no, no. yeah coca Cola and squeeze cheese yeah oh lots God. of Ritz crackers <laughs> oh lord <laughs> i have a lot of cleansing to do <laughs> yeah well it seems like even the processed food today is worse than the processed food from the past right I mean, if you, if you if you look at a box of little Debbie cakes, it looks like a, a chemistry experiment. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, and even the linguine. You know, someone had asked. Someone yeah. told me to look at the label that I was taking eating too much sodium, and so oh, yeah. I was like, oh. And so I went to look at the sodium, and then I saw the ingredients, and it's like, oh my gosh. I mean, half the words I couldn't even read. Yeah. And the list was so long, and I just want people to know that this was ten years after. I got my master's and I had studied nutrition and here oh. I am eating this thinking I'm eating something healthy. You know, we're, we all, nobody's perfect. No, no. We all are on our own journey and we all are learning at different stages in our life. You can learn something today. You can hear me saying something today that resonates with you, but you may have missed something I said earlier today. But if you listen to this podcast or something else, I may say the same information again, and then you hear it and you're like, wait a minute. Your body just isn't ready to receive it all. We're only we're only hearing what our body is ready to receive, which this may sound really woo-woo. But I know when I go back and you know, reread or re go back over a study um, or reread a book, I'm always reading different books on healing and nutrition, then I may read something for the third time or listen to a lecture for the third time and I hear something like I've never heard it before. And I'm sure that that's happened to you too. And so we all are, you know, even though it's something I studied. I just, it just never dawned on me to, to look at that. I wasn't ready to see it at the time. And so can I feel, you know, do I beat myself up about it? Because, I, oh my gosh, I was doing this this whole time. No, you know, you, you didn't know what you didn't know, you know, and now, you know, so now you do better. Exactly. There comes a time for everything. Yeah. People may be listening today and like, I can never do that. But in six months, they might think, you know what? I think yeah. I'm gonna give it a try because. Yeah. yeah. I think oh. I remember them telling me some tips on how I could eat better. And then you go back and listen. Oh, that's actually not that hard. Yeah. But the most important thing is do not judge yourself for where you're at right now. Don't judge yourself. Don't berate yourself for not being eating good enough. Because if you right. do that, right, you may never eat clean because, you know. Right. It's, right. A good, it's for me. And I don't know for, for Jennifer, it was a slow transition. i I used to live on hummus and guacamole for like a month because I didn't know what else to eat. <laughs> we didn't even talk about those. Yes. Nice yeah. creamy substitutes for cheese. Yes. 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 Yeah. But it is, a, it is a transition. It is a process, but it will be worth it if you want to maximize your health and longevity. Because that's the one reason that I do it. I want to be healthy. I don't want to get sick. Mm -mm. I mean, there's no guarantees in life, but living this way puts odds in your favor right of staying healthy for longer you know so right and not only living longer but being a, able to be active exactly and, and have your Mem yeah, capabilities your, too yeah. yes yes mm. yes yeah i want to be grandma, one of the old people Go my ahead. grandma reads she reads and reads and reads and wow. she doesn't even wear glasses she has hearing oh aids oh my god but it's like what <laughs> that's amazing yeah she does have some glasses that she'll bring but like when we went out she forgot to bring her glasses for the menu and it was like she was oh i forgot my glasses but she could still read and she said isn't it amazing and it was like yes you are amazing <laughs> well so that's a good goal to shoot for yes and she battled i mean she had an ovary removed when she was 20 ended up having five children she um had breast cancer she had pulmonary hypertension most people don't even live a year and a half with pulmonary hypertension that was when she was 80. She's over 100. So, <laughs> wow. Yes. So, don't let your diagnosis um, tell you what, how you're going to live either. Well, that could be another podcast on diagnosis yes, it could. and labeling people, how, what that does yes. for your mind. And yeah. Yes. Yes. You are not your diagnosis. Yeah. Yes. And hopefully we can help you get on track. Yes. All right, so we need to go today. I hope this helps you on your plant-based journey. Um, I can't remember what we talked about. Oh, 
Well, I don't know. We were thinking about talking about the healthcare system next time. I don't know. Maybe we should. You know, maybe we should talk about diagnoses and, and things like that. Um, I think so. Yeah. I mean, yeah. In a so, way. <laughs> let us know in the show notes if this is helping you and what else you would like to um, hear about, too. You know, how can we help you on your health journey? And um, so have a wonderful week and we will be back with you soon.